Hi, my name is Denise Gehring. I'm the librarian for the School of Nursing at APU. Today I'm doing session two of searching for literature on, and we're gonna be focusing on the database searching. <clears throat> Before you watch this, I would recommend that you watch session one, which was on, <clears throat> the steps in searching for literature. Let me go ahead and share my screen with you. <clears throat> so in the previous session, I talked about step one through step five, and that is in this recording, Searching for Literature, part one. <clears throat> I also have an introduction to the library um, recording uh, listed here that would recommend that you watch as well. This one is a little bit longer. The searching for literature video is about 10 minutes long, <clears throat> part one. And then we're going to be recording, I'm recording currently right now, part two, and it's gonna be focusing on the database search. So when you choose a database, you will, um, it will depend on what, what your focus is for your um, paper. <clears throat> Generally, you will begin with, at minimum, to start with CINAHL and Medline, um, but you might want to add psych info if you're focusing on mental health, or ERIC and Academic Search Premier if you're focusing on education, or if you're focusing on um, nursing administration, you might also want to add um, community Communication and Mass Media Complete, which is another database that the library subscribes to. <laughs> so you'll go ahead then, at minimum, we'll go ahead and start with CINAHL Plus with full text and Medline with full text. <clears throat> So we're back in the database now, and <clears throat> what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put our search terms that we came up with, our search statement that we came up with in um, the previous video, so right here, into our search. So I'm just gonna copy the first line, <clears throat> and I'll paste it here on the first line. Going back, I'm gonna copy the second line, except for the and, okay? And the reason why we don't wanna copy the and is because and is already listed here. And we're gonna do this with the other lines, the rest of the lines. And to add another line, you'll go ahead and click the plus sign. And then you'll click on search. So right now we're just searching in CINAHL and Medline. And if you click on show all, you'll see which databases are searching in. Okay, so we have um, over um, 131,000. Okay, um, we're gonna go ahead and um, add additional databases. To do that, we'll click on choose databases. <clears throat> so we're in the EBSCO host platform and there's a lot of different databases that EBSCO provides. And so, um, like I mentioned, um, if you're focusing on mental health, you want, might wanna add Psych Info. Um, there's Academic Search Premier and ERIC if you're focusing on education. I mentioned Communication and Mass Media Complete as well. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and add Alt Health Watch and Nursing Health Source 
Health Source Nursing Academic Edition. Okay, and then we'll click on OK. And then I'll click on search. And again, if I select show all right here, we'll see the four databases we're searching in. <clears throat> While I'm on here, I just wanted to point out the chat button. Anytime you do need help while you're doing your searches, you can go ahead and chat with us. Feel free to do that. <clears throat> so now we're up to um, over 155,000 articles. Okay. So we can go ahead and we're going to go go ahead and do some limiting. So under limit two here on the side, we'll click on show more. If you do apply any limiters down here, okay, these will not be maintained when you get the link at the end. I'm going to talk about getting a permalink at the end. Well, if you use any of these limiters, it will not be maintained later. So it's your best interest to go ahead and go in the menu here under show more okay limit to and show more and apply those limiters there <clears throat> so i'm going to go ahead and limit it to peer reviewed and the last five years and then for CINAHL right here i want to limit to english language Medline, the same thing. Both Health Watch and Nursing Health Source Nursing Academic Edition. You're going to want to go ahead and limit these to academic journals and articles. Um, there's a lot of extra stuff in here, so that's why we go ahead and do that at the beginning. And I'll go ahead and click on search then. <clears throat> So now I'm um, at a little over 47,000 articles. So the next step that I usually do is I go through these articles to see if I see any other terms that I could use in my um, as keywords. Because sometimes um, there's other words that we don't come up with right away. Um, other ways that we can come up with keywords might be just typing in, start typing in a word like cancer. And then if you do or, other terms will come up. Okay, so I've done that already up here. But then other ways that we can look for keywords is looking at the titles, the abstracts, and the subject headings. In particular, the subject headings will help you um, focus your search because we know those are the terms that are used throughout the text of the articles. So, so I see this term life limiting. I'm going to go ahead and add that. Okay. Um, another term that you might use, see, is life-threatening. So I'm going to add that as well, and then I'll click on search. <clears throat> so we're, um, we've added over a 1,000 articles. And don't worry about um, adding articles, because we're going to do some more narrowing. We'll, we're going to do a lot more narrowing to this, and so um, you'll see that um, that we can um, that we'll be able to get rid of them. A, a lot of extra articles. <clears throat> <clears throat> I 
Okay, so um, we'll probably go come back through these in a little bit. I'm going to go ahead now and um, we'll go ahead and maybe we'll add, let's see, where was that at? Uh, Chaplin, I saw Chaplin or Chaplaincy. Oh, here we go. Chaplains. So I think I'll go ahead and add that as well to um, the top line here. And then search. <clears throat> yeah, and we got about 300 more articles. So we're going to go ahead and do some narrowing here. And I want to go ahead and limit this um, to um, cancer to just searching in the subject terms. So the reason why we want to just search in the subject terms is we'll just focus our articles on those articles that are specifically about cancer. Okay. So we'll go ahead and limit this. <clears throat> and so now we're down to um, 15,500. So as you can see this, um, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to be narrowing our results and this um, will help us do that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that with the first line as well. Um, narrow this to subject terms and then search. So now we're down to And I'm just going to see if there are other terms that we um, might want to add to our search. So I see here a term well-being. So I think I'm going to go ahead and add that to my uh, last line here. <clears throat> and then let's see what we get. Um, the other term I see here is distress. I'm going to go ahead and add that as well. And then a couple other terms that I'm going to add um, down here, grief. Grief, hope, or coping. And then let's see what we get. 
So that added about 20 more articles to our search. Um, the next thing that I want to do is I want to go ahead and look for these terms throughout um, the subject terms as well. So I'll go ahead and narrow that. And then this line here, we're going to do a little bit different. Um, I'm going to put this in parentheses, okay? And then I'm going to go ahead and put SU, that stands for subject, so it's looking in the subject terms like these three lines did. And I copied um, it, except the SU, and then I'm going to do OR, and then I'll type in TI, which it will look for all those terms in the title then. Um, and then I'll go ahead and click on search. So it'll narrow our search, but it also will broaden it to the looking in the title. So now we're down to 204 articles, which is a, a good number. I, um, you know, I recommend that you try to get it down below 500 um, um, at the beginning here. And um, from here then, um, I'm going to be showing you now some of the database features. And then we're going to go in and um, I'll show you how to plug this into your Prisma diagram. <clears throat> so first off, the database features include how to get the full text. So you'll see PDF full text, HTML full text. Some, some nice features about HTML is that you can download the um, audio file and listen to it if, if you prefer that. And you can also change the language. So if you want to change the language to another language, maybe your first language is another language and you want to change it, that's what's nice about HTML. <clears throat> um, again, anytime you see these two, you'll be able to get the full text. Um, sometimes there's also link full text, and sometimes link full text doesn't always work. So I'll go ahead and click on link full text here just so you can see how it works. And usually it goes right to the database, but if it doesn't, um, what you'll do then is you'll just go back to here and you'll click on full text finder. Okay. So this did come up right away and I just click on PDF to download it or read and annotate PDF, either one. <clears throat> and you can go ahead and download it onto your computer then. And like I mentioned, if it didn't come up, you can always go to Full Text Finder and then click on a Check APU World Cut Discovery. And then it will give you the database that it's in. Anytime you see full text availability for this item, you would click on View Full Text and then it would open it right up. Okay, if we don't have it, you would click on Request a free copy from interlibrary loan. And I talked about this in the video introduction to the library. <clears throat> so this one here is open access. If we don't have it again, you can go through full text finder to get it, or if it's not available. And then those that you just see full text finder we may or may not have it in another library database um so you just click on it just to see if we do and we'll go ahead and click on check apu holdings and it looks like we don't have this one so you'll go ahead and uh, request this from interlibrary loan so we don't have the full text you'll go ahead and request it from interlibrary loan Okay, um, you can get the APA citation for these articles by clicking on the article title. And then on the tools menu on here, you'll go ahead and click on um, cite. And then go down to APA and copy and paste it. Okay, now be sure that you double check these because sometimes they are not correct. And that um, usually the article title 
you'll see there's more capitalizations than it should be. Okay, so the article title should be sentence case. Well, this one is not sentence case. Okay, so make sure you double check those capitalizations. Um, also, personal names and dates, um, double check those as well. <clears throat> Going back to the results list. One of the features um, with this database is you can go ahead and create folders, okay? And so if I click on folder here, I can go to new and create folders for different, um, however I wanna structure. Um, my articles. Okay, so this is what I would recommend um, for the comps class in particular. I would recommend that you create a broad comps folder and then in that you create two folders um, initially. Okay, so TA include, TA exclude, TA stands for title abstract, and this is part of the Prisma process where you do a title abstract screening. Okay, and so that's why you wanna create those two folders. So you'll put whatever you want to keep in the include folder and whatever you wanna exclude in the exclude folder. And this will just help you keep track of the number of articles that you have in, in, your, um, in your search so that you have the, the exact number for your Prisma, okay? <clears throat> so I'm gonna just go to back now. And this will go back to my results. Um, <clears throat> so discussing the Prisma, I'm gonna go ahead and on the Health Sciences Virtual Library, to get to the Prisma guide, I'll go under other research guides and I'll go down to creating a Prisma flow diagram. So I have information on the Prisma here. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and click on step-by-step -step using the Prisma 2020. On this page, there is uh, ways that you can download um, the, the Prismas, okay? And then I have step-by-step -step instructions on how to complete them. I would highly recommend that you go through this in detail and read over it. Um, it will help you while you cr create your Prisma and to know exactly what information you need before you actually do your search, okay? Um, there are two versions I have here. Version one is databases and registers only, and version two is databases, registers, and other sources, okay? So if you know that you're going to be getting articles from other sources like citation searching, or um, websites or um, uh, like Google Scholar or organization sites or uh, following um, recommended articles on uh, publisher sites, that type of thing, then you need to select version two, which is databases, registers, and other sources. You just click on this and you can download it. <clears throat> so records identified from databases, okay? So that number will be 204, this number right here, okay? This number will be anything, it will be your exclusion. So we've already made all of our exclusions, and so that's the number that we put here, okay? So when we did our database search, um, and all applied all of our limiters, we go ahead and we put that number here, 204. There's an option to add other, um, the number of articles in each database. So if you want to do that, you can. So below that, you'll say CINAHL plus with full text, N equals 112, Medline with full text, N equals 74, Health Source Nursing Academic Edition, n equals 16, alt health watch, n equals two, okay? So you go ahead and do that below 
the total. Okay, registers are like clinicaltrials.gov or Cochrane Trials. If you don't use this, go ahead and just remove this line. Okay, if you're not planning to use those. Uh, the next step is uh, records removed before screening. So this is um, the main thing is your duplicate records. Okay, so um, to find the number of duplicates in this search, and since we're searching in more than one database, we're likely to have duplicates. Okay, so I'm going to go first off change page options. Um, if I have more than uh, 20 articles, okay, here, then I want to go to page options and change this to 50, okay, and then apply. And then you'll go down to the bottom of the page, and you'll go to the last page of the search. So I'm going to go to page 5 here. And so on the top of page 5, you'll see, note, exact duplicates removed from your results. And now it says 164, okay? So um, we it said 204 before, now it says 164. So the number of duplicates that we have is 40, okay? So on your Prisma here, duplicates removed from search, you'll say N equals 40. Okay, records marked as ineligible by automation tools or records removed for other reasons. Okay, so sometimes um, we don't have automation tools, so you can go ahead and remove that, okay? But records removed for other reasons. Um, for instance, um, you might find that uh, article is retracted by the publisher. Um, if that happens, you, you could put that into article records removed for other reasons, okay? Otherwise, just remove this line, okay? Now into record screened, we'll go ahead and put that total number of um, the 164, okay? So we're going to go ahead and add that here, um, 164 that we had in the search after the duplicates were removed. And now we're going to do the first screening process, and that is the title abstract screening, okay? And that's what I mentioned um, earlier when you to create those folders so that you can go through. And um, what you'll do is you'll look through, you look at the information that's provided here. And if it looks like it is something that um, is relevant to your article that might answer your research question, you go ahead and add it to your folder, okay? And to your include folder. If it is not relevant and it doesn't, you don't think it will answer your research question, you'll put it in your exclude folder. Okay, so I put that in my include folder. <clears throat> I'll go ahead and put that one in my include folder. So this looks like it's mostly focused on the caregiver. So I'm going to put that in the exclude folder. And I'll go ahead and put this one in my include folder. So you'll go through all of your articles then, and you'll add them to either your include or your exclude folder. And, and then, um, the total number of articles that you put in your include folder, you will go ahead and put in this line here, report sought for retrieval. Whatever you put in your exclude folder, you'll put in this box right here, records excluded, okay? So the ones that you then put in your include folder, report sought for retrieval. So let's say I went through all 164 articles and I added 100 articles to my include folder and 64 were in my exclude folder, okay? So then I'm gonna go through those 100 articles and I'm gonna get the full text. So this is easy then in 
um, in the database because you can go ahead and get the full text or if we don't have it, you can request it from another school through interlibrary loan, and that would be considered um, getting full text as well. Okay, so if you can't get the full text, so maybe you requested it from interlibrary loan and you get an email, um, the article is not available, um, we can't get it, okay? Then that's what you would put into reports not retrieved, okay? So let's just say we had one article that we could not get, so we'll put that into reports not retrieved, okay? So then we would just do our math, so everything that we could get, then we'll move down here, so that would be 99, okay? Reports access for eligibility. Now we're gonna go ahead and apply our inclusion and exclusion criteria to those 99 articles. That means we need to look at the full text of the article. So um, everything in the article, applying our inclusion and exclusion criteria, whatever we decide to exclude, we're gonna go ahead and put into reports excluded, okay? And you'll remove reason one and you'll put in the actual reason. For instance, you might say wrong intervention or wrong type of study or uh, wrong population or wrong focus or wrong setting. Okay, all of those are examples of why you would exclude something. And then the number of articles for each reason that you exclude, you'll go ahead and put that on here as well. Okay, so then you'll total this number. You'll take this number here, 99, minus the total number here. So let's just say total here, we decided we we're going to go ahead and exclude about. Um, 70 articles okay so that leaves us with um 29 articles left and that would go into studies included in review okay and um so studies included in review which is right here okay so now we're going to go over to this right hand side so maybe you identified two articles on Google Scholar that you want to include, so you'll put N equals two. No organization, so you just delete that off of here. And then you did a citation, you, you had some articles that you found, two articles that you found in um, a reference list of an article. Another article that your professor recommended, so you can go ahead and put that under citation searching as well, okay? And then maybe you also found an article uh, or two more articles when you went into the database to pull up a full text of an article and it was a recommended, um, they were recommended articles. Okay, so we'll go ahead and add then five here. We had two here under data websites and five here. Okay, so then for report sought for retrieval, we'll do the two plus five, which is seven. We'll put that here. And then we'll go ahead and get the full text. Well, whatever full, full text again that we can't get, we'll put here. Well, let's just say we were able to get all full text. So we'll just say N equals zero, okay? And so then um, the seven goes down here, reports access for eligibility. Again, you'll apply that same inclusion and exclusion criteria that you applied here, and you'll exclude it for any reason that you used over there and additional reasons as well, if there's other reasons that it didn't fit on that side, okay? And so you could also, if maybe they all fit your inclusion and exclusion criteria, you could say N equals zero here, okay? Otherwise you'll say, how many you have and what you'll do is you'll do the math this number minus the total number here um, that number you'll go ahead and add into the studies included in review okay the 29 that we had on this side um, so the reports of included studies is a little bit different so if i scroll down here i'll have i have a description of what that means so an author might identify a study that was that has results appearing in two reports. So for example, one providing data at three months, other at two year follow-up. 
In this case, the number of studies included in the review, whereas the number of reports of included studies is two, the studies included in review is one. Okay, so that is uh, reports of included studies. If you don't have any of these, you can just remove it. Okay, so then your Prisma, your math equals, your math should um, be equal throughout. And by the time you get down here, whatever number you put in studies included in review will be in your table of evidence or your um, data extracting tool. And I'm just going to pause for just a moment here. Okay, so now that we have our Prisma filled out, we're going to go ahead and go back to the database here. And I'm gonna go ahead and just go back to the first page of the search. And um, now I wanna go ahead and get my search strategy. So to do that, I'm gonna click on search history. And this search strategy is what you'll use in your paper, in the methods section of your paper um, to show your search, to describe your search, okay? Um, according to Prisma, it is required in the methods section of your paper. So you can add it to the appendix, um, it probably would be best. So I'll go ahead and check the mark here and click on print search history. And then um, what you'll do is you'll just copy and paste this into your, uh, into your paper, okay? So I'm just gonna copy this. <clears throat> and then I'll, um, I just have a, a Google doc that I have open here and I'm gonna paste it here. Okay, oh, I didn't mean to do the highlights. So let me remove that. Okay, and so I have the date that I did my search, 
the search terms, the limiters I applied, the databases I used, and the total number of articles, okay? So you can move these, it's in a table format, so you can move them a little bit around here. Um, and then I also like to include the link to the search here. So to get the link, you'll go back to your, um, your database search here. I'm gonna close the search history. And I'm gonna click on share. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna copy the persistent link here. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and just um, go back to my Google Doc here and highlight where I want it at and then put the link into it and apply. And so then I have that link so I can get back to the search easy. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so uh, the next thing that I like to do on here is um, we had 204 total. Okay, 164 with the duplicates removed. So I have notes of what I was um, doing. So it's always good that you take notes and um, it's due diligence is very important. So you might want to uh, just keep track of things, that type of thing. And there were 40 duplicates. Okay. And then you also want to add, um, like I mentioned, the number of articles in each database. So you have that as well when you're doing your, um, writing your paper and completing your Prisma, okay? And so I'll go ahead and add those here, okay? <clears throat> um, we have our search terms, our limiters that we applied, and then the databases that we use on um, this page and I added those um, the number in each database okay and that's before duplicates are removed now going back to our search here so maybe you did a search in CINAHL this search here the four databases but then you also did a search in say PubMed or uh, ProQuest um, databases of one of the ProQuest databases or a few of the ProQuest databases and you need to combine your searches together okay and to deduplicate the search so we know we have 40 duplicates here we can go ahead and um, export these records then so email link to download exported results so up to 204 so it actually will only send 164 because that was um, what we um, was a deduplicated result. It's only going to send the deduplicated results. Okay. And so you'll get a link and then you can go ahead and import that into Zotero. Um, import your articles from ProQuest or PubMed into Zotero. And then you can deduplicate the results on Zotero. Okay, um, on um, Zotero, to do duplicate the results, let's see, I have a guide on how to remove duplicates, okay, and I talk about um, removing duplicates in EBSCO and ProQuest manually and then on Zotero there's instructions on how to do duplicate your results um, by clicking on this link and it's pretty simple okay so um, feel free to use that if you do need help with Zotero I have another guide called citation generators and management tools and um, there are there's a short guide on Zotero here and um, if you are information on Zotero on how to use Zotero, um, if you want to take a look at that. Also, um, the library has a YouTube video on using Zotero. Um, I will be posting it here shortly, um, but I just wanted to point that out. <clears throat>
So um, I believe that is going to be wrap up um, this session today. Um, if you do have any questions, um, feel free to let me know. Um, so we covered how to um, some of the features in the database, including how to limit our results and um, using the, the field tags to limit our results as well. And then locating full text, um, sharing your results um, or exporting your results, um, getting your search strategy and completing your Prisma flow diagram, okay? Um, getting the permalink to your results. And then also using the folders feature in um, the EBSCO databases to um, help you in the Prisma process. So the include and the exclude of your, what you'll be using um, for your paper, okay? Um, if you do have any questions, please feel free to let me know. Um, you can contact ask at apu.libguides.com. Um, if you do have any questions, feel free to reach out. Have a great rest of the day.